Good morning and welcome to this worship service here at Shalom Mennonite Church. We would like to welcome everybody who's attending with us in person and all those who are watching our live stream. Our theme this morning is loving your neighbor and our, our scripture passage is from Romans 12 and it talks about some of the some of those things and I'm looking forward to Pastor Jarrell's sermon on loving your neighbor. Please pray with me. God Almighty, we ask for healthy, thriving relationships between neighbors. We pray different cultures will be able to understand and care for one another in our neighborhood. We pray that the diversity of your people will be celebrated by all neighbors, just as you affirm and love each one of us. Amen. Please stand and join me for the call to worship. When we see our neighborhoods covered with blue and red signs, our 
If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Please remain standing and turn in your voices together hymnal for, to number seven, Come Let Us All Unite to Sing. Turn to number 638, Love Divine, All Love's Excelling. All of our hymns this morning are dealing with the topic of love, God being love, God loving us, God loving us to love our neighbors. Love Divine, All Love's Excelling.
I invite anyone who is young or young at heart to come forward for children's time. You can be 80 and still be young at heart, just FYI. Just saying. All right, we got a little bit, a few people this morning. Um, real quick to start off with, can I get a show of hands? How many of you have seen Finding Nemo? All right, you've seen Finding Nemo, good. Then you will probably recognize the friend I brought with me. What is that? A shark, that's right. Good day, mate. Good on ya. Ever since I saw it, all sharks have Australian accents. That's just me, perhaps. I don't know. Um, so, I, uh, I'm, I'm curious, do you, any of you know, by any chance, what sharks eat? <laughs> People's legs? Well, not very often, not very often, but, you know, I'm not, I can't rule it out. Any other thoughts on what, on what sharks eat? Fish? Fish. You didn't see the movie because then you would know that fish are friends, not food. But yes, yes, they do eat fish. But sometimes they eat seals. So I have my seal, I have my shark. Do you suppose that seals and sharks are friends? No. no? You don't think they hang out on the ocean together and, and have conversations? They don't play games together? Do you, think, do you think sometimes that a seal ever sees a shark in the ocean and says, hey, that shark looks kind of sad. I'm going to go over and ask him if he's okay. Do you think that ever happens? No. Do you think that ever times that there is a shark who sees a seal and is like, you know what, that seal looks kind of, kind of, uh, kind of hungry. I'm going to go get him a fish and I'm going to give him the fish. You suppose that happens? No. So they're not friends. Well, that's, that's very sad, but you're probably right. And I think that's sad because, you know, God wants us to love even the people who are not our friends, doesn't he? So he would like for, for the, the shark to offer the seal a fish, even though it probably never happens. And I wonder if maybe some of you have people in your lives who maybe are not real nice to you or maybe sometimes say mean things to you and so you don't really consider them to be friends. Is there people like that in some of your lives maybe? See some nods? Um, you know, you don't have to go up to somebody who's mean to you on the playground and tell them that you love them, although you could. You don't have to go up to a kid on the playground and give him a big hug, although you could. But Pastor Drell today is going to tell us a story, and part of the story is a Bible verse in which God tells us that it's not our job to get back at people who are mean to us. Because sometimes if they say mean things to us, maybe we want to say mean things back to them. Or maybe if they're mean, they do something mean to us, we want to, we want to be mean to them. And the Bible verse that Pastor Drell is going to talk to us about today tells us that it's really not our job to be mean back. It's not our job to worry about how nice that person is or what that person does or says to us because we love them anyway because it's actually God's job to make sure that whatever happens to that person is supposed to happen to that person. So I think there's a temptation um, when we hear someone say a mean thing, we say a mean thing back. And that doesn't make us feel any better. Has anyone ever tried that? Someone says something that's not nice and we say something not nice back to them? Yeah. But it doesn't really make you feel any better, does it? No. All you've got then is two people, both of whom said mean things. So you can't control what someone else does or says to you, but you can control how you respond to it. And you can love them and let God worry about what happens to the other person. So you don't have to love them. You don't have to hug them. But it doesn't mean we can be mean to them. We can just let God handle the rest of it. Does that sound reasonable? All right. Good deal. You can go back to your parents.
This is the time in our service when we uh, gather our offerings. The ushers will be coming around with, with baskets. Um, please pray with me. Generous God, you have given us many gifts and drawn us together into Christ's body, the church. You have blessed us with generous and cheerful spirits. May the gifts of our money, time, and talents support the ministry of your church. Amen. Our scripture passage this morning is from Romans chapter 12, verses 14 through 21. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be arrogant, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good.
Romanos capítulo 12, versículos 14 a 21. Bendigan a quienes lo persiguen, bendiganlos y no los maldigan. Alegrense con los que están alegres y lloren con los que lloran. Vivan en armonía unos con otros. No sean orgullosos, sino pónganse al nivel de los humildes. No presuman de sabios. No paguen a nadie mal por mal. Procur procuren hacer lo bueno delante de todos. Hasta donde depende de ustedes, hagan cuanto pueden por vivir en paz con todos. Queridos hermanos y hermanas, no tomen venganza ustedes mismos, sino dejen que Dios sea quien castigue. Porque la Escritura dice, a mí me corresponde hacer justicia, yo pagaré, dice al Señor. Y también, si tu enemigo tiene hambre, dale de comer, y si tiene sed, dale de beber. Así harás que la arda la cara de vergüenza. No te dejes vencer por el mal. Al contrario, vence con el bien el mal. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to those of you who are watching online. Um, it's good to be with you all this morning. Hope that everyone has had a good week. Um, I've had a couple of like anxiety-inducing days, right? My stuff, not anyone else's stuff. No one's fault, my fault. And so this morning, that's kind of carried over a little bit. Right, like my hand is trembling a little bit as I, as you're doing the quiet reflection. And so um, usually in these kind of moments, I want to pay attention to my breath and my breathing. And so could we do like a couple more seconds of just some deep breathing? Is that cool? Like, I'm sorry, I don't want to throw us off course a little bit, but um, it'll help me. So just take some time to ground yourself. And breathe in, and then release. Breathe in peace, and breathe out tension. Amen. Thank y'all. So over the past several weeks, um, we have been doing this summer preaching series that has been kind of fun, kind of challenging, but it's been an interesting time. And um, you all had the opportunity to choose uh, the topics for us to preach on. And so Ben and I decided which topics we would uh, preach about weeks ago 
And for this morning, I'm going to be preaching on loving your enemies, I mean, loving your neighbor, but specifically loving your enemies. And I think that this topic comes up at the right time as we have so much tension in our world currently. Now, typically when we talk about loving our enemies, we point to Jesus' words in the Sermon on the Mount. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. And I love this passage, but today I wanted to go a little, a different route. You know, I wanted to zig where people zag. And so this morning's passage is from Paul's letter to the church in Rome, where he echoes Jesus' sentiment, but puts it within a church context. So friends, please join me in prayer. Lord our God, um, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to gather together, both here in person and online, God. God, be with us this morning. Help us to hear from you. Open our eyes, open our hearts, open our minds to your word today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So, Paul is writing to the church in Rome, and this church has some interesting dynamics, right? So first of all, the church is made up of both Gentile Christians and Jewish Christians. Both groups are trying to figure out how to live together um, as a church community. And also, this church is in the belly of the empire, Right? And Paul, as we see in our verses for this morning, is worried about the persecution that is to come. We have to remember that Paul works with this idea, with this framework, that any community that is loyal to Jesus will eventually, at some point, face persecution. Right? This is how Paul's mind operates. And we see this through, we see this idea through most of the Pauline letters, that the church has to learn how to live with potentially hostile outsiders. This section of Paul's letter opens with Paul telling the church to love one another and to hate what is evil and to hold fast to what is good. He talks about contributing to, the, to people's needs and extending hospitality to strangers. And then, beginning with our verses for today, Paul turns his attention to the potential threats outside of the community. He opens with, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Here Paul is saying that Christians are supposed to meet hostility with blessing. Going on, he says, they are to rejoice with those who rejoice and to weep with those who weep. They are to live in harmony and associate with lowly. Remember that Paul here is not talking about those who make up the church community, but those who are outside of it. If your neighbor, church member or not, is weeping, then you should be aware enough of the situation to weep with them. If they are rejoicing, then you too should be rejoicing. They are to not pay evil for evil. And then verses 20 through 21 get interesting. Paul makes this dramatic and even surprising turn. It says, no, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they, meaning enemies, are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not, over, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Here Paul is making the point that by responding to evil with kindness, they are more so embarrassing their enemies because they are have the moral high ground. They are taking the high road. Now, this passage raises some interesting questions for us. One of those being, who are our our enemies? 
Quick question. Show of hands. How many... <laughs> this is going to be funny. How many of you would say right now that you have enemies? Okay. A couple of folks, a couple of folks. All right. You know, often when, I, when we use the word enemies or enemy and we see it and we say it, it feels very harsh. Like we want, every, we want to think of everyone as our friends or at least acquaintances. But the reality is that sometimes we do have enemies. And that is okay. I mean, it, you know, it kind of stinks that there, are, there may be someone who doesn't like you or is actively trying to stop you. Like, that's not great. But it is okay that we are not friends with everyone. It is not about who you deem as an enemy or a friend, but it is how you treat the enemy that is important. And I have heard people refer to others as enemies and they use this to justify like their evil deeds towards them, right? Like I, I've heard the term enemies of the gospel and have seen churches use this to justify exclusionary practices. I have heard the term enemies be used to justify going to war and, to, and for killing people when we call someone an enemy, we are tempted to treat them poorly. When we see someone doing evil deeds, or what we deem as an evil deed, we are tempted to return that evil for a worse evil. On Saturday, July 13th, many of us witnessed the wrong way to treat an enemy. We saw an act of political violence as former President Donald Trump was the victim of an assassination attempt. And after the attempt happened, like I was glued into social media, right? I wanted to see what people were saying. And I was on my Facebook, my Instagrams, my Twitter, well, X formerly known as Twitter. And I was looking on the social media and all of these people on both sides of the political spectrum were condemning the violence that took place. And I found two things frustrating about the discourse. Hear me out. The first was that it took bullets being fired before we acknowledged that the violence in our political discourse has become a problem. Like, we talk terribly about people who do not agree with our politics. We have to consider the violent rhetoric that we use way before gunshots ring out. As Mennonites who preach the gospel of peace, we have to understand that our words can indeed cause violence. This is why our verses today open with this idea of blessing our enemies and not cursing them. And the second thing that I found frustrating was that even though we watched, right, a high profile politician get shot, I still do not believe that we know how to treat our enemies, especially when it comes to politics. We create extremists. We create a world where violence has center stage. We create a world where it is acceptable to harm someone when we have felt like harm was done to us. And I know that it sounds like I'm preaching to the choir, right? I understand that. Like, we are Mennonites, and we have made a special point to see life as sacred, and we refuse to commit physical violence against people, enemies included. But I'm also going to be honest here. We Minnows do have a tendency to talk bad about each other. Like, if a Mennonite doesn't like you, you'll know it, not because they physically harmed you, but because they'll do something else. And that's the passive aggressiveness 
that our tradition carries at times. And we all talk about it. It feels weird talking about it from the pulpit, but we all talk about it. You can't kill people, so you have to let out the tension somehow. And friends, we cannot let ourselves be influenced by evil. We cannot return evil with more evil. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said it best in his sermon back in 1957, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Now, this does not mean that we let our enemies run over us. This does not mean that we back down from our beliefs, but it means that we treat them as human beings. We treat them as God's precious creation. And there may be a time when you develop enemies in this life. Honestly, Paul would probably argue that just by following Jesus, we will develop enemies. It's like natural to following the gospel. Some of you may be Democrats and you consider Republicans as enemies. Some of you may be Republicans and you consider Democrats as enemies. Some of you may consider them both as enemies. You may find yourself on opposite sides of the street on a protest. But I hope and pray that we can truly learn to love our enemies, that even when our world is at odds, that our community can be a place of love and care for all of God's creation. Um, so I'm going to share this story. I didn't know if I was going to share it or not, but I'm going to. Um, so bear with me. And before I share the story, I want to say um, that I, I am not advocating... I am not anti, like advocating for anti-police in this sermon or anything like that, but this is just a reality of my life. Um, so growing up, I grew up in a world where I saw police as enemies, right? And, because, and mostly because I saw them take more people to jail than help somebody, right? Like in my mind, right? Like this is the world that I was living in. And so, you know, and me and my family, you know, we were really nervous about, like, police presence. I remember going to doctor's appointments and getting out, and my mom wouldn't send me back to school. So I just kind of had the, you know, the free day. And she wouldn't let me go outside to ride my bike because she was afraid that if a police officer saw me, we would get in trouble for truancy, right? And so, like, these kind of moments kind of shape, right, how I would think of police. And then you add in um, all the protesting that happened, you add in... Um, the issues with, uh, uh, in Ferguson, when Mike Brown was killed by police. And you know, you have all these moments, all this tension building up, right? And so like, I had operated kind of in this world, right? I didn't talk to police officers. It, I didn't want them to talk to me, right? Like, I was hesitant that if I had a problem, would I call them? Like, I used to think about these things. And I remember um, when I was in Oregon, one, um, I was working at an organization, uh, volunteering, and a woman um, within the organization had a, as tensions were rising after the death of George Floyd, um, a woman decided she really wanted to have a conversation with um, the police chief in Salem. And she calls me up and she's like, hey, Jarrell, would you come with me to this meeting? at the police station, and I'm terrified. I've never been to a police station in my life. You know, I've worked hard to stay away from police stations, <laughs> right? Um, so, like, I was really terrified of going to this. I also take, like, the job of accompaniment very seriously, right? Like, I believe in accompany, accompanying people in difficult times, right? Like, that's, that, I see that as my main job as pastor, right? And so, I'm like, all right, cool, I'll, I'll do it. Right, so I walk in with more anxiety than I've ever had in my life, hands shaking, knees shaking, um, and we sit down, and I meet this police chief, and, you know, we're talking, uh, he's actually weirdly from Texas as well, and I'm like, how'd you get up in Oregon? But anyway, so we're having this conversation, and it's, it's okay, right? We're not getting anything done, we're not changing the world, right, or solving problems, but we're just talking, right? We're talking out, you know, both sides 
um, of argument. We're talking about, you know, police presence. And, like, he's talking about the need for police presence. And we're going back and forth. And eventually, you know, we leave. And it feels like nothing was accomplished, right? That, like, we still walk down on opposite sides, right? I go to an event. We have um, a, a local event for Juneteenth. It's a Juneteenth event. And I show up there. Police are there, right? They have a booth. Um, and the police chief sees me. And we start talking again. And weirdly, like, throughout this event, you know, I have, me and the group that I'm working with, we have a booth as well. Weirdly, throughout this event, like, we are weirdly working together, right? Like, our booths are kind of close to each other. We're talking back and forth. They have water, so they give us some waters. And we start having this conversation. And I'm not going to say he's my friend. We're still enemies. We're still on opposite ends of, like, public safety and things like that in that conversation. But it felt good to see that his heart beats, right? It felt good to see that there was some kind of warmth from this individual. And sometimes it helps for us to just imagine that people are people too. The enemies are people. The enemies are, have hearts. The enemies can be warm. And I know it can be hard for us to love our enemies. It can be hard to want to treat them with dignity and respect, especially if you feel that they have done evil deeds to you or others that you care about. But the reality is that if we want to follow Christ, then we must confront our enemies and the evil of this world in the same way that Christ did. And this is where I get a little preachy, so I apologize. But I'm, I'm almost done. But apologies in advance, I'm going to get a little preachy. The gospel tells us that God became flesh and blood. That God who is all powerful, so powerful that this God has the ability to wipe out everything and came pretty close according to the book of Genesis. This very God made the decision to face evil. Not with a sword and not with a gun not with more violence into the world, but God faced evil with goodness. God responded to the evil of this world by living, by dying, and by resurrecting among it. And this serves as our example. We are to confront evil with goodness. We are to drive out darkness with light. So friends, this morning, if you do not hear or listen to anything I've said up to this point, please receive these words from Scripture that Paul wrote from our passage today. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good.
Let's stand as we sing 158. I know God loves me, or Gottesdi Liebe. You can choose to sing in the other, whichever language you want. closing hymn is We Shall Overcome. Interestingly enough, in the hymnal, if you look up at the scripture references, Romans 12, 14 to 21, which was our text for today, lists this hymn as the hymn uh, based on this passage. And I think as Jarrell told us, reminded us, we don't overcome evil with evil, but we overcome evil with good or with love. Let's stand as we sing this.
Please hear these words from A Benediction by Sarah Bessie. Call us to humility, confession, and repentance, even when pride feels more comfortable and superior. Teach us how to rest, how to abide, and how to light candles and be satisfied. Don't let us get away with divorcing our prayers from our politics and policies and practices. May we love our neighbors.